In this video, I'll show you how to make sheets of the stupendously useful stuff for the home museum curator, or just for the serious collector with something special to display. What's it good for, you ask? Well, it does an immense amount of stuff very well indeed. It covers display stands in custom colors. It makes dramatic backgrounds for wall-mounted displays that complement both your collection and your home. It works so well that you can actually use it to glue old drawer cases and such back together or just cover up dents and dings and general oldnesses in your display furniture. I need to mention there are some beautiful books on the subject of faux finish, but what I'm about to show you is not this sort of faux finish. Instead, it's, for want of a better word, manly faux finishing. It's fast and dirty, cheap and easy, and I'll say it again, very useful. Here's what you need to do it. A paint roller, not a tray, just a roller. Paper towels if you're particularly sloppy maybe a medium-sized paintbrush, and a cruddy old one will do just fine, and rubber gloves if you're particularly fussy. Maybe a plant mister if you're slow. This will just keep your paint wet and cooperative. Most important is a good, big, flat work surface. Don't try this in your hip pocket. Depends, of course, on how big your sheet is, but do take some room. That's about it, except for paint. As for paint, cheap latex from the Odd Lot store works best. It's cheap because they don't put much pigment in it, and so it's a little translucent. Either you pay extra for what they call faux finish glaze, which makes paint translucent on purpose, or you buy the cheap stuff that comes that way. I do have to talk a little bit about paper. I would suggest some good old brown craft paper from the packaging supply store. The only problem is they want to sell you a 60-pound roll that involves about a mile of paper. See if they'll sell you a hundred foot or so off the roll at the end of their bench. Failing this, you can get a roll of almost craft paper at the office supply store. The problem is that this paper tends to delaminate. This is not a deal breaker as we shall see in a bit, but it will take an extra step. I'd avoid butcher paper. It's waterproof and paint and glue won't stick to it as well as we'd like. I'd like to give you some advice on color, but I can't. Color is hard. See if you can find someone in your world who's good at color. Generally, such people are called women. So I'm going to take the coward's way out and use blue, because I like blue, and green, because it's analogous to blue, and white, just because, and just a little black, because I like a little drama. I have to tell you, there are undoubtedly more sophisticated ways of doing it, but the simple scheme of black and white and a couple of analogous colors will always work. Okay, here we go. Here's the paper I'm using. It's a little small, but then I have a small video camera. This is an optional step right at the very beginning. But you wad up the paper, carefully undo it, and spread it out again. You don't have to do this. You can start with a pristine flat sheet and dive right in, but the wadding makes for a little interesting extra texture. We'll be doing more with some texture in a minute anyway with the paint. And by the way, texture is not only cool all by itself, it is both very forgiving of either bad technique and papering over things, as well as papering over things that are dented or uneven or regardless of your technique. Here's a basic blue primary latex I've used on my other how-to objects. Now while I'm rolling this out, let me explain how I'm going to explain things. I'm going to do a running commentary on what I'm doing in the video and then, during the dull parts, I'll mix in some advice on some other stuff. For example, I'd like to show you lots of interesting techniques that make for lots of elegant and subtle effects. Well, I'd like to, I can't do it. There's just no way to do such things online. They just don't show up. So I'll have to tell you about them, and you can go out and try them yourselves and see what these effects are. This brings up an important point. All faux finish is, to one degree or another... Whoop, wait a minute. This is important. This is a white paint. Uh, where was I? Uh, all faux finish, it's, it's an accident. It's, it's going to be a happy accident, we hope. But it's an accident just the same. Every sheet you do is going to be a little different no matter how carefully you try to duplicate them. So make a big sheet at the beginning. Anyway, here's my white and my analogous green. Notice the barbecue sauce bottles with flip-top caps? They are wonderful. Now I roll out these colors, and I have to say I'm doing a pretty poor job of it, but on purpose. I want a little subtle, I don't know, dynamics? Anyway, the longer you roll it out, the more even it gets, and this is entirely a matter of taste and preference. Okay, this isn't bad, and I could stop now, but I'm about to make it more dramatic and show you another useful technique. Thin dribbles of black paint go on, and then you fold your sheet over on itself. Squish wet paint to wet paint. 
do this enough and if the stars align just right and if your paint gets dry enough and if your paper holds up you'll get this cool snakeskin looking texture. I can't give you much advice on how to do it. I've only gotten it right myself a couple of times. It's one of those happy accidents. As you're doing this fold and squash thing, look for places with too much of this and not enough of that, and other places with too much of that and not enough of this, and squish these parts together. You'll even things up nicely this way. But I must warn you, if you're using the cheap office store paper, it might delaminate and you will tear big hunks of paper off of one side and glue them to the other. So if you are using the cheap stuff, either test a corner as you go along, or just paint a sheet in your base color and let it dry before you dive in. Give it a nice full coat and you will, in effect, prime your paper with a layer of tough rubber. This makes even cheap paper pretty bulletproof and you can squash and smear and texturize and just fiddle to your heart's content. Now you notice that when I fold it over sometimes I slide and wrinkle it. Adds to the texture. This is a good thing. By the way, I recommended you have a plant mister at hand and you notice I don't use one. I work pretty quickly but you might find it helpful to slightly moisten your work if you're taking your time. One last bit of advice. If you do try a big sheet, and I recommend that you do once you have the hang of it, get a helper. It makes the unfolding much easier with an extra pair of hands. Speaking of hands, latex watches off easily with soap and water provided you don't dilly-dally. So let me critique the sheet of faux. It's pretty dark and dramatic, I suppose, but I like it. I could keep folding and squashing till it was more even, more subtle, but this video has gone on long enough. Look for suggestions on how to use what you've made on my other how-to videos. Drop me a line if you have questions or suggestions. And thanks for